Yo, do you have any of these Amazon Fire tablets just laying around? Stick with us and we'll show you how to easily repurpose them into a ultra useful, cost-effective touchscreen display for home automation, Internet of Things projects, and other hobby tech uses. The Kindle Fire tablet was released in November of 2011 as a low-cost alternative to the iPad, at a price of about a third as much. It runs on its own operating system based on Android, currently on Generation 11. You might be asking yourself, will this work for the version tablet I have? I don't know, depends on which version you have and when you're watching this and such, but uh, you know, probably. Part of what we'll be doing here is removing lock screen ads and technically if you're the original owner and bought your Amazon tablet with the stipulation that you are going to be looking at these lock screen ads, you uh, might be technically maybe sort of possibly in violation, but that's just between you and Bezos. It's our understanding that the process that we're going to follow here does not void any original equipment manufacturer warranties. Step one, power on the device. And if it's a brand new one, walk through all the Amazon registration steps. Well, hello. Once you jump onto the Wi-Fi network, your tablet will be able to update the operating system and some of the built-in applications. Step two, we're gonna to need to click on that settings icon and if you can't find it anywhere on the home screens, not a problem, just drop down from the top and there it is. From here, scroll down to device options. Select the about fire tablet option. This part's like entering a secret cheat code. You're gonna tap that serial number with your finger several times. Keep tapping on that serial number and a secret message is gonna appear at the bottom. That's okay, keep tapping through it. Now all we gotta do is go back to that device option page and we'll find some goodies for us. Cool, this wasn't here before. Go ahead and click it. All right, first let's toggle on the developer options. All right, approve that and let's go ahead and click this option to keep the screen awake. Definitely going to need to enable the USB debugging option. Feel free to stay and look around, but that should be all about what you need to do there. We need to download the application on our computer that's going to interface with the Amazon Fire tablet. So why don't we go ahead and go to Google and search for the ADB of choice. And if you're like, huh, uh, let's walk through it together. Download this file somewhere to your computer where you can find it. This application here is really useful, so we're going to load this to the device in a minute. We'll download the Fire Operating System Android APK file directly from their site. It's time to connect the tablet to the computer using the USB cord. Mm -hmm. 
If you're getting stuck on this step, I'm kind of worried for you. Using that Fire Toolbox application we had downloaded, go ahead and open that up on your computer. Depending on the version of Fire Toolbox you have, you can see this one is number 22. I think they're on 25 as of this recording. It might change a little bit graphically, but otherwise I think the tool has pretty much stayed the same as I've played with it. First things first, let's get rid of these pesky lock screen ads. You might be like, hey, does mine have lock screen ads? Uh, well, does yours look like this when you turn it on? If so, let's get rid of those things. Click on the lock screen management option on the first page of the Fire Toolbox. Click the option that says remove lock screen ads and execute the tool with your authorization. And voila, lock screen ad's gone. Now we'll load our kiosk mode app onto the tablet. To do that, we're gonna go to the second page of the Fire Toolbox app and go to the side load apps. In the first slot for app number one, you can click that browse button and go to the place on your computer where you stored that .apk file. Click open and then click the side load button. And success, it's on there. The final thing we'll do here today is clean up some of the Amazon apps that come preloaded on the device. So to do this, we'll return back to that first page of the Fire Toolbox and click on the Manage Amazon Apps button. The simplest option will be to choose the standard debloat option from the dropdown. Now you could execute this tool as shown and it'll remove what you see here, or you can go back and manually choose the apps you wanna remove one by one by clicking on that simple radial button at the bottom. Just a couple closing notes as we wrap it up. We're seeing the best results from products dated 2017 to current. This last one's a little bit niche, but if your tablet's time is not correct because it defaulted to a mountain standard time in Denver and you live in Arizona who doesn't participate in daylight savings time, well, I got you. Go ahead and click on this button here. I definitely recommend doing this first thing if you can because some of the changes you might make in the developer options or parental controls tabs might make it such that you can't get back in here and make easy changes later. I learned that the hard way a few times. And worst case, if you find yourself in the middle of an epic fail, not to worry, you should be able to go back and hit your tablet with a factory reset and give it another shot. And with that, we're done. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends, and be sure to send us a message with all the cool stuff you got going on with your tablets.